What's up everybody, my name is Matt from BZB Gear and I'm one of the videographers here and today we're going to be touching on how to set up your NDI camera for live streaming. Specifically we're going to be talking about how to set up our cameras, our BZB Gear um, PTZ cameras for live streaming through OBS. Now OBS is a super popular platform for live streaming, specifically um, a lot of churches use it, uh, just a whole bunch of different avenues use it. And one of the main factors that of why that is uh, would be the fact that it's free. It's free and it's very robust and it also happens to be open source. So what that means is when it's open source, it uh, means that the code is available to pretty much anybody, the program's available to pretty much anybody, and the community can uh, make improvements and add small things here or there, like plugins and whatnot that ultimately make the experience a little bit better. OBS is a great uh, jumping off point to get into live streaming. Of course, there are some better tools out there. Uh, we specifically recommend vMix, and if you would like, you can totally get into contact with us and we would be, love to talk to you about that and kind of push you in their direction. But that's not the topic of today. Today, we're gonna go ahead and jump into how to get your NDI camera hooked up with OBS. So, first thing that we need to do in order to do that is jump into your browser, and you're going to need to connect to your PTZ camera in order to enable NDI. So, we'll go ahead and open it up. We'll go to uh, the IP address, which for me is 192.168.30.185. Go ahead and log in really quick. I'm not going to mess with uh, too many of these settings, uh, but what I will do is just show you where you need to go. You need to go into configuration. You're going to need to go down here to NDI under network configure. And you're going to enable NDI by checking this box. And then from here, you can also name it whatever you want. For me, I'm just gonna leave it as NDI 4K. Once you hit save, you're going to need to go down to camera configure and you're going to need to reboot your camera. I'm not gonna go through that because I've already done it, but once you've done that, you're gonna to need to log back into your camera and just make sure that NDI is still enabled and it's working as intended. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go up here and if you have not downloaded OBS, you can go ahead and go to Google and just type in OBS, and it's going to be the first result that pops up. Uh, just go ahead and click on it. It's available for pretty much any operating system, Windows, Mac, or Linux. Just download the one that's right for you. And then the last thing that we're going to need to do, actually I lied, there's two more things, is going to be going to NDI Tools, which is found at ndi.tv. And then from here, you can go up to the NDI Tools uh, section, and NDI Tools is available for download. I'm gonna go ahead and open up NDI Tools here, and the main reason I'm having you look into downloading this is because of Studio Monitor. Um, there's a few other things that might be attractive to you, like you're going to be able to uh, plug this camera into Premiere or After Effects straight through NDI, or there, there might be a few other things, but let's go ahead and hop into Studio Monitor. So once I open it up, this is what you're gonna be looking at is this screen. And if you go over here to this little menu button right here, you can click here and then go to NDI HX and then it pulls up the NDI 4K, which is on the network. And boom, there's our NDI camera. Um, the great thing about this is I have full control uh, over this camera. So if I want to pan or tilt, I have that ability to do so. I can also adjust the zoom or the focus. I'm not going to do that because I don't wanna mess with the focus and have to redo it again. But just know that this tool is here and this is why NDI is so attractive because with these tools, you can have one camera on your network. It's super simple to do. All you need is one ethernet cable running from the camera to the network switch and then you're pretty much good to go. As long as you have a computer that's on that network, you can control that camera from anywhere inside that building as long as you are on that network. So the final item that we're going to need is going to be the NDI OBS plugin. So again, you're just going to go to Google and type in NDI OBS plugin. It's going to be the first result that pops up. 
Um, it's on OBS's webpage as well, so if you're already there downloading OBS, you should be able to find it. Um, it goes to a GitHub, you just follow this link, and then you'll be able to pick the version that you need and download it from there. Once you have that downloaded, you just need to install it, and it should automatically be attached to your OBS. So, I'm going to go ahead and open up a, another version of OBS here. Uh, it might get mad at me, but we're going to do it anyways. So we're going to go ahead and launch. Boom, here's OBS. I'm going to go ahead and open up a new scene um, just because this one's already set up and that doesn't help you because you're not seeing exactly what you have to do to get it set up. So NDI setup is what I'm going to title this scene collection. And so now this is what OBS is going to look like when you first open it. You're going to have a few boxes here. You're going to have scenes and sources and then this big box right here in the middle. So think of your scenes as individual cameras. So if you were to run a four camera setup and you have a switchboard that you can swap between those cameras, that's kind of what the scene allows you to do. You can set up different um, sources inside that scene. So if I wanted to have desktop capture in one scene, and then I wanted to have just a camera in another scene, and then maybe I wanted to have that desktop capture and a camera in a third scene, I can flip between those three and it's pretty seamless and easy. So we're going to go ahead and cover the sources tab next. And this is where you're going to put what you actually want to be viewed in that scene. So since we're talking about NDI cameras here, this is exactly where you would go to input your camera. So all you have to do is just hit this plus sign down here and then go up to NDI source. Like I said, as long as you had OBS already installed when you installed the OBS plugin for NDI, this should just pop up automatically. So you're gonna go ahead and click that. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it as NDI source and then hit okay. And then all you have to do to um, get this camera in here is hit the drop down menu at source name and select the camera. Once you hit OK, it might take a few seconds for it to pop up, but boom, there it is. Um, I'm going to need to rescale this because even though this is outputting at 4K, for some reason it just doesn't automatically scale to the base canvas, which is also in 4K. Um, so that's how you add the camera. The next thing that you're going to want to do is come down here and you're going to hit Add, and then you would go into an Audio Input Capture. This is how you're going to add your microphone to OBS. Um, I'm just gonna leave it as audio input capture, hit okay. And then once you're in this drop down, you can go ahead and select what you want. I'm just going to go ahead and go with microphone here, the Realtek audio, and then hit okay. And boom, as you can see, it's picking up my voice from the webcam mic and you can control it from down here. So if I wanted to drop the gain because I'm too hot, as you can tell, I'm hitting the red, you can just go ahead and slide this little slider down until your voice or whatever you're recording is at a good level. Now, what I would recommend is something that is sitting in the yellow and maybe tickling the red, but you don't want something that lives in the red constantly. And that's pretty much all you need to know in order to set up a scene. So now you have your video input and your audio input. So what if, for example, your camera is in 4K, like this PTZ camera, but you don't stream in 4K because you don't have the network for that, or you don't have the bandwidth, or, or um, your camera, not your camera, but your computer can't handle all of that information. What you might wanna do is go into the settings tab down here. If, for example, you wanted to go ahead and maybe you're recording in 4K, and you want to record in 1080p, but the input that you have is 4K. You don't necessarily need to scale down the base canvas. You can leave your camera at 4K. And instead what you can do is go to the output scaled resolution and drop that down to 1080p. So 1920, excuse me, 1920 by 1080. And then now I'm still recording here at 4K, but 
when it's output, it's taking that 4K and downsampling to 1080p, which has big benefits in terms of size of the file and also you're going to get a little bit of a crisper image. If you were just to record at 1080p on 1080p, it might not be as good, but 4K downsampled to 1080p always looks a lot cleaner than just regular 1080p. So the other thing that you could do is maybe if you're streaming, you want to go ahead and drop down the quality. Uh, main reason why you would want to do this would just be bandwidth concerns. Um, when you're streaming and especially streaming at uh, higher resolutions, that takes up a lot more bandwidth. So right now, if you look at the output mode here, it's on simple. What you're going to want to do is go into advanced. And then if you want to change the output, you just click the rescale output. And then you have multiple options to do with this. So 1920 by 1080 p is going to be the highest output that you can do typically with streaming. Um, and then it just goes down from there all the way down to 698 by 392. What I would recommend if you need to save bandwidth is probably go with 1280 by 720. That's still going to provide a pretty good image, but it's also going to help save you some bandwidth. All right, I think that just about does it for OBS. Uh, there's a whole lot of stuff that we can get into the, with this. And I'm sure that we will in the future, especially since I'm looking at doing a little bit more uh, involved tutorials on OBS. But for now, I think that's a good jumping off point into how to get your NDI camera uh, from BZB gear connected to OBS and get you started on broadcasting. Um, if you are looking for something that's a little bit more professional and offers a little bit more pizzazz, I highly recommend you look into vMix. Uh, we 100% recommend vMix to a lot of um, people that are looking to do very professional live streams. And that's just simply because of the suite and toolkit that they offer. And above all, some of the support that they offer. So if that was helpful, please uh, let us know in the comments below. And if there's anything you would like to see from us specifically regarding OBS or um, just maybe questions that you have about how to get a better stream or a better picture out of your camera, please let us know. Uh, I'm always looking for more ideas that I can help you guys uh, end up producing better content with. So until next time, I've been Matt. See you later.